Real stress Yo. game, man. F everybody else on the guy. Hey, we GDK, we die by feet. F your money on BDN. We nah, did whatever. Right. Roy just is different, you know what I'm saying? He was a real enforcer. Like, Shorty was right. He like he was out here for real, you know? Shorty was real like, out here. Like, some people would just, like, can't help it. I just call T. Roy. You know? You're going to go crazy, you know? You would not look more me. You would, they would not stun a me. No, no, I keep that 33. Yes, I will. So if you see me, it ain't no sh Leave me the f alone. Damn, yeah, two really got popped. Why do you think the cap When did that happen? What up, gang? Back with the real. You know what's the deal. Chicago is known for some of the most ruthless savages in the streets, and one name stands real tall for show, and that's the Chirac Rambo, T. Roy. Fearless, dangerous, op shooter, T. Roy was all three and was a top hitter in the O Block. It takes a certain level of savagery to gain that much respect and strike that much fear into the opposition. According to his best friend, King Vaughn, T-Roy was the definition of street. Y'all know how folks see his man. No T-Roy, oh, no T-Roy, oh, let me see who up. So how did they catch him lacking? New images and photos emerged of the hit that took his life. And we gonna take a look at it and his time in the streets that made him Chirac's Rambo. Let's chop it up and break it down. The story of the legend began October 30th, 1993. James Johnson, also known as T-Roy, grew up in Parkway Gardens in his infamous old block with his moms, pops, sisters, and two brothers, Slutty and HK, and his cousins, Eli, Lil Mario, and Zell. Already growing up in the Black Disciple stronghold in the city, his life was likely to take a route to the streets, but he may have had a chance until he met up with one of the Chirac youngins Chief Keith, who he became real cool with, remaining tight even down to when the ops took his life. In fact, T. Roy is rumored to have been a shooter for Keith, and Keith hasn't done nothing but add evidence to this in his tracks like No Reason, where he raps the bars. T. Roy got my strap, he gon' blast for no reason. And self, with the lines, T. Roy got a gun that's bigger than him, and he gon' blast that bitch all by himself, and he don't miss, he gon' lead the right one left. While Keith was his homie, there were other kids from various sets that attended Diet as well. Just below 600, THF 46 Slushy, and Front Street Quono, who was one of the early ones rapping with Keith in the cafeteria during lunch. <laughs> Unfortunately, he would survive one shooting only and be chased and murked by cops years later. It's just that, you know, they shoot all the time everywhere, you know? So I just happened to get caught in some cops fighting, that's all. I was walking down here, then I just heard gunshots, I didn't know where they was coming from. Then I got shot and I was right here on the ground. T. Roy was a product of the streets. By how he moved and operated, he was built for it. Short, but packed a punch, both with his fist and his strap. Oftentimes he'd make it known that if you run up on him, he's gonna end your life without hesitation. This dangerous demeanor brought him a lot of respect in the hood. His name just had that kind of weight to it. One of the few dudes who could roll with a member of an op set and not be confronted or run down on. This was the case with him and 051 Arrow. T-Roy and Arrow were cool. Even if Old Block and 051 was locked in their beef, T-Roy had so much pull in the streets that he was even able to guarantee Arrow's safety when he came over to their hood. That's something even Lil Durk avoided when Meek Mill wanted to come to Chirac. Good, bro, Man, Meek good. told me that. Meek told me that a long time ago. He like, I want to come to your hood. I'm like, you on your at your own risk, bro. <laughs> I'm not for sure, but tell you like, mm -hmm. you good, bro. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, no, nah, this, right, yeah, yeah, this, right. <laughs> this shit can go up. This shit can go up. It is over. <laughs> T. Roy would eventually cross paths with King Vaughn and the two will become close homies. Unfortunately, Vaughn would be held up behind bars in 2001 and wouldn't be back out until 2012. T. Roy on the outside held it down and was always shouting out free the gang. All of this was before Wick City went through the change that also changed T. Roy into the hood thirsty savage he became. This began with the loss of a number of his friends. The first being O.D. Perry in August 2011, when the female Chirac assassin, K.I., 
Merc the respected O Block OG and allegedly taking his gun. This was the birth of O Block. The name changed from Wick, Wild Insane Crazy City in honor of their fallen homie. But the losses would keep on piling up, pushing T Roy further and further to the brink. Sharada the O was the next to fall. It was the hit that turned Boss Trail into something of legends. In 2012, he spotted Sharad from across the street in the 6400 block of South King Drive. And with a laser beam on the strap, he took Sharad top off with one shot. Police discovered Sharad lying on the street with a single gunshot wound to the head. He would later pass away at the hospital. K.I. and Boss Trail pushed T-Roy's buttons by insulting his slain homies. Even FBG Duck and Ruger were in on the fun dissing Sherrod on their diss track, Expose Me Remix. T-Roy was filled with anger. Mixed that with the jabs at his fallen homies and the Chirac Rambo was born. His first talk of the drop was the unlucky Marlon Monroe, also known as Little Doc of Tukaville. April 28, 2012, Little Doc was at his aunt's Woodlawn building doing some painting when he took a break to hit up the convenience store to grab a drink. As he entered the store, it's alleged that it was T-Roy, along with twins Cortez and Courtney of TYMB, who pulled up from outside and dumped on him. But that wasn't enough. There were more getbacks to be made and T-Roy was spinning and spinning. He didn't forget Sherrod and exacted his revenge on Boss Trail. Boss Trail, almost sensing T-Roy was hot on his trail, tried to get out the streets. He bought a bus ticket to leave Chirac and head to Iowa to start a new life. But once that Chirac Rambo had him in his sights, man, you already know what happened. On November 8th, 2012, just two days before he was to leave to Chicago, Boss Trail was found face down in an alley in the 2600 block of West 83rd Street with a bullet to the back of the head. It's rumored that a shorty was used to lure Boss Trail to the alley where instead he met with T-Roy who ended up ending his life. T-Roy was ripping his ops apart and his name began to be more feared with everybody that dropped. Roy just is different, you know what I'm saying? He was a real enforcer. Like shorty was right, he like he was out here for real, you know? Shorty was real like, out here. Like, some people would just like, can't help it. I just call T-Roy, you know? You gonna go crazy, you know? But like, hey, shorty, yeah, shorty is a savage on oh, old. Another that was fearless. Like, he had no fear. He was stretching dudes out for real and was often out lurking for more ops. It was GDK on everything. Real stretch game, man. F everybody else on the guy. Hey, we GDK, we die our feet. Put your money on, beating it. We pick it up. The ops were dying and the mothers were left crying. But none of those tears could bring her son, Boss Trail, back. It was only a matter of time before Balance had to return to the war zone, and T Roy and O Block took a major loss when J Money was murked. Word is that on September 2nd, 2013, J Money was set up, believing he was meeting up with a girl in the 6600 block of South Roads Avenue in Woodlawn, but instead, K.I. and her homie was waiting in the cut. They would pop out and open fire, hitting J Money about the body and head. Just like T-Roy, K.I. was hurting from her losses and used the moment to get her jokes in to really eat at T-Roy. But even for an assassin, there's an operative that will hunt them down. But this time around, the operative wasn't just one. It was a whole group. T-Roy, King Von, and Big A. April 11th, 2014, K.I. would be hit nine times in the mouth neck and chest before running and collapsing on a neighbor's doorstep. But neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started f***ing. K.I. would succumb to her injuries at Northwestern Memorial Hospital after fighting for her life. There have been a long debate and discussion about whether T-Roy physically had a part to play in the hit or was he just at the time incarcerated because on the day that the hit was carried out, Vaughn posted this to Twitter, suggesting that T-Roy was locked up. But that could have also meant that T-Roy is going hard in the streets and Vaughn needed to up his game on the ops because they had sort of like a competition rivalry to see who would catch the most bodies. But even if he didn't pull the trigger, Vaughn's was his mans and K.I. took J Money and dissed their fallen homie. So it comes like T-Roy was kind of like a driving force behind the hit because of how much his homies knew he wanted her gone. In over 300 pages of a later released document, authorities list Vaughn as the suspect in the shooting, but they are unable to prove it. T-Roy was doing damage in the streets though, but he was also fighting cases behind closed doors. He was a known hit of the law enforcement and was arrested a number of times while terrorizing the ops. You'd think bro would put the street life down completely, especially since he had a son to raise, but nah, he was back out op hunting and caught Stunner, a 
from Suwu TTV. June 8, 2013, Frederick Taylor, also known as Stunner, was on the slip ramp between 71st Street and 75th Street on the southbound side of the Dan Ryan Expressway with another woman and man in the vehicle. Between 1 and 1.10 a.m., another whip allegedly pulled up with T-Roy, Boss Money, and BJ. Somebody up the pole sending shots into the vehicle, wetting up Stunner and hitting the female passenger in the chest. Both were transported to Advocate Christ Medical Center where Stunner succumbed to his wounds. The woman and the other male occupant would make it out with their lives. T-Roy took pride in his bodies. It's crazy how dudes take a life and laugh and get excited talking about it. In this video, you can hear T-Roy mocking Stunner's passing saying, they will not Stunner me. No, no, I keep that 33. You would not look more like me. You would, they would not Stunner me. No, no, I keep that 33. <laughs> T-Roy got him another one, but everyone has their day, and T-Roy's day finally came. February 14th, 2017, T-Roy was out doing what he does best, finding and murking ops, and one op in particular was on his radar, TB from Taekwon World. Just about a month before, TB dropped the disrespectful track, Taekwon Way, that took aim at every op. T-Roy would go to a popular area where TB was often posted up. Reports state that about 11.55 a.m., James Johnson, also known as T-Roy, went into a store on 71st Street. At first, it was believed to be this shoe store, but surveillance pics from inside the store leans more towards it being the store beside it. T-Roy incident was followed inside by another person, TB. He was caught lacking while trying to catch his op lacking. Pics from inside shows T-Roy standing behind an unknown person and can't get right with the striped pants while TB in all black is walking up, hand in jacket with the pole tucked. Next, T-Roy drops to the floor the moment TB blicks him with the pole. Now take a look at this pic with can't get right and TB besides duck. Their clothes match the description from the pics. It's crazy how easily the little details can give away dudes. Remember that vid before T-Roy mocking Stunner's passing? Check this out. I could be tweaking, but doesn't the same dark fit look like the one in the store pick? T-Roy was a fighter. He tried to hang on, but passed away at Northwestern Memorial Hospital after being in critical condition from the gunshot wound to the chest. Enraged by the passing of his brother, HK was on the path to get back and call it fate but he caught TB lacking around the same area as his brother and murked him with a headshot living up to his name, Headshot King. But there's no winning in the streets. The cycle never ends. It's rumored that Wooski and Tukaville members were the ones who would spin the block on HK, murking him. T-Roy's older brother, Slutty, actually met his end the night Vaughn passed. He was allegedly one of the men who shot Lil' Tim in the leg. Word is that Slutty was gonna finish Lil' Tim off, but his gun jammed. Cops began firing and Slutty was one of those who got hit and passed with Vaughn. He was really close to Vaughn and even Dirk. T-Roy did his thing in the streets. His reputation was solid and he was well respected. But those things can only take you so far when you in beef with so many ops. He was hit up once before in the arm, but this time he couldn't fight off the Grim Reaper. Who got shot? Who? Now my ear gang. He got shot before. He gang. R.I.P. to the Chirac Rambo. So there you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, man. And I'll catch y'all on the next one.